South Australia now. Most people when they come here take some time out and sample some of the region's finest, but none of that for me. I'm here to see a little lamb who's in a bit of trouble. <coughs> take a look at this. That is amazing. <coughs> you know this is this is slightly strange, don't you? Well, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's amazing. How are you? Yeah. It's Julie. Good. It? Yeah. Hi, Chris. Chris, how are you? You must be Zoe. Hello. This is Lammy, and she's five weeks old now. Julie is concerned about Lammy, a little orphan that has formed an unusual relationship with Zoe the Dalmatian. Life got a bit confusing, didn't it? No, thank you. Yes. I'm just, just checking her out, that's all. How old was she when Mum walked away? I think she would have been about half an hour old. Really? Mm. Was that soon? Mm. The first animal that she saw was the dog. <laughs> so she thought that was her mother. She literally joined the dots? Yes, yes. And, and went, OK, that must be Mum. And I just thought it was so very unusual to see a spotted lamb. It just looked like a Dalmatian puppy to me. I can honestly say I've never, ever seen anything like this in my entire veterinary career. This is so bizarre, yet so incredibly fascinating at the same time. Zoe happened to be in season at the exact moment that Lammy was abandoned. So with Zoe having all those hormones like progesterone in the system screaming out for her to become a mother, all of a sudden Lammy appeared and Zoe could become a mother. But we're talking about one in 10,000 chances here combining and producing this incredible situation. The one worry I've got is that she never suckled from her mother. So what I wouldn't mind doing is just having a bit of a look over her now, just to see how healthy she is. And from there, just make sure that everything's going along OK. When a lamb's born, the mother's udder is full of something we call colostrum, which is a milk that's really rich in fat, high in energy, but most importantly, it's got a lot of antibodies in it. And those antibodies go straight into the lamb the moment this milk is drunk and provide immediate protection. And that protection lasts for weeks and months. Without it, she just does not have any sort of immunity. The first little infection that comes along, it could kill her. Hello, how are you? At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Hero appears to be in perfect health, but looks are deceiving. He's lost his appetite today, so very unlike a Labrador. So um, we suspect he has ingested rock. The one-year-old Labrador has been vomiting all day. Owners Sally and Michael are worried Hero's been up to his old tricks, eating rocks from their backyard. He'll eat anything he can get his mouth onto, so yeah, that's why. Just in case we'll bring him in. It always amazes me how Labradors can be really, really sick and they just look like nothing's wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, come on, come on. They have such an ability to hide things and keep that tail wagging and pretend like everything's OK yeah. when really they're actually very, very sick. And the fact that they're such good actors can actually be quite dangerous for them. Something is a little bit uncomfortable for him here. His intestines just feel a little bit thick. They eat everything. I've seen them eat socks, underwear, sanitary items, rocks, balls, toys, you name it. A Labrador can swallow it whole and it never surprises me what I find inside them. When I get to a certain part of his tummy, mm. he tends to flinch. That's not good, please. I think what we need to do is take some x-rays of him. I'm feeling him, it just it doesn't feel right. There, there is something really hard there. Come on, let's get some x-rays. 
And if something is stuck, well, that's really not good for him. You're a doofus. This way. Come on. Come on. Whoa. Hero, this way. Come on. Come on. So the next step is to actually take an x-ray of Hero and I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Come on Hero, this way. This, this dog way. has complete control of me. He is taking me for a walk. He is taking me for the x-ray. I don't know how I'm gonna even get him on the table. Rick, are you free to help with this very sick dog? In reception, owners Sally and Michael are anxiously waiting for answers. Hero's been vomiting and has even turned down food. Three, two, one. Lie down on your side. You were happy to do it before. Hey, hey. Labradors are very, very good at pretending that something's okay when it's really wrong. <laughs> oh dear. I thought I felt something funny in there. But that's a, a really massive rock there. Another little fragment of something there and perhaps even another one further down there. So uh, this rock is about three to four centimetres big. So it's like that. So he's obviously swallowed that hole, it's gone down, and now it's lodged somewhere in his intestines. That is a worry, Vic. So it may not pass by itself. I don't know if it will. If that rock stayed in there and it didn't pass out naturally or we didn't take it out with surgery, the intestines would become really inflamed and unhealthy uh, and in really severe situations they can perforate. The rock can basically open up the guts and um, he's just got intestinal contents leaking through his abdomen. That's called peritonitis, that's life-threatening, so it's pretty serious to have something stuck in there that doesn't come out. Today I'm heading to the Barrington Tops to Devil Ark. I'm so passionate about this place and the work that's going on here, it could be the only chance for survival the Tasmanian Devil has. Australian Reptile Park manager Tim Faulkner has been on the road for six hours. He's on the way to the Devil Ark in northwest New South Wales. The reason for Tim's visit is to check on the adult female devils to find out how many are pregnant. We've got a welcoming party already. This is right. Hello to you too. The Ark is the largest breeding program of Tasmanian devils in Australia. With the devil facial tumour rapidly wiping out the population in Tasmania, Tim is hoping insurance colonies like this one will stop the species becoming extinct. This disease is horrific. You're talking about lesions on, on their face the size of tennis balls. They don't die from the disease itself, they die of starvation and dehydration because they can't eat or drink. That's horrific. No sign of a cure, no sign of a vaccine, no sign of the disease slowing down. It is scary. So what I need is a very generous sheep who's actually going to give a donation of some blood. And you'll catch it? Yep. You'll attempt to catch it? That's the plan. OK. Chris is in the Barossa Valley working on a left field idea on how to protect five-week-old Lammy from disease. An orphan from birth, she was unable to suckle from her mum and never received life-saving antibodies. The plan is that we're going to find a ewe, a mother sheep that has a lamb. Now, what makes her special is that she has a lot of antibodies in her system right now. If we then draw out some blood and let that blood settle, I can actually take the antibodies out of that blood and inject them straight into Lammy. <laughs> Lammy's at a disadvantage in the future if she was to get an infection. She has no resistance to fight that. So any assistance that Chris can give her with this blood procedure, I'm really happy to go along with it. Right. This is the bit you're excited about, isn't it? No, I'm, I'm going to watch you. Watch and learn. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. But it's a plan that has a small hitch in the night I need to catch the sheep to get that blood sample. Not going to be easy. So, Chris, you're looking for the one on the left, that little one, that little innocent-looking sheep. And that's her lamb on the ground in front of her. She looks so slow. She was the last one to lamb, so she would have the freshest amount of milk in her.
Devil Boys. Hello, mate. Tim's How are you? joining the Rangers at Devil Ark to find out if their crucial breeding program is working. Oh, it's Devil Men to you. Devil Men. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, enough of much, mate. We're just pretty excited ourselves and we just want to get checking some females, so we want to see some young. We've been waiting for so long. OK, let's get a few ready. <laughs> well, the only way we can know exact numbers of joeys, or in fact how the devils are, is to catch them. The suckers for this. Won't take long to get in. Traps laced with fresh meat will be left out overnight. We need to see joeys tomorrow. I get really nervous just wanting to know that they're there. I want to know the females have these babies. I want to know that what we're doing is right. And I want to know that we're actually making a difference. I reckon, well, we spread them right along that fence line. Yeah. This Tassie Devil recovery program is a really special thing. I mean, one of the world's most famous extinctions, and it's very close to my heart. It happened in 1936, many years ago, but it's the Tasmanian tiger. Gone, wiped off the face of the earth. I don't want in my lifetime to have to say to my kids, oh, well, the devils went too. Perfect. We have a chance now to save the devil. It's, it's not too far gone. We can bring it back from the brink of extinction, and if we can build up numbers here, we can keep them here. The disease burns out, and we put them back in the wild, and it's a pretty unique case. We like at times for them to come in and have a social feed, and the way we do that is to have one food item, and you'll get five or six devils in, not, not that different than like crocodiles, and they work together to pull bits of meat off. Here's our first. He's a beautiful big boy, maybe 10 kilos. Pretty good table manners at the moment. It's been a pretty good day. We've had a show watching them feed. Tomorrow morning's everything, but do we have babies? Let's be honest, it was a miss. Got one hand in there. She was gone, she was fast, she was too good on the day, but... Did you land in any manure? No, unfortunately not. No, you'd like that. Let's not try to sugarcoat it, it wasn't pretty. She was too speedy. It takes a real man to say that, but I was beaten by a mother sheep with a lamb. The lamb probably beat me as well when it's all said and done. Come on, girls. In the Barossa Valley, Chris needs to give the orphaned lamb an important transfusion of antibodies to boost her immunity. Good girls. But first, he has to catch a blood donor. Could have told me about that before. I told you I had a secret weapon. It's well, called a white bucket. You're smirking at me, getting me to try to tackle these poor, innocent mothers. Go and on. you had this all. Go on, then. I thought I'd let you have an attempt. Hey, guys. I know. Come on. You right? This is very generous of you. Now we've finally caught our you. It's a lot like a human donating blood. Right, ready? Well done. Yeah. First time. <clears throat> He's a good doctor, isn't he? Hey, good girl. So just let gravity take that blood from a jugular vein yes. down the tube into this bag here. And how much are you were aiming for to collect? Oh, we'll probably half fill it. Oh wow. So you can see it's it's already running quite nicely there. Beautiful. Good girl. You ready? Yep. OK. Here we go. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you made, you made your Thank feelings you. very clear, didn't you? Thank you for mm. coming to visit my farm, Dr Chris. <laughs> bon I think she got a bit of a spit <laughs> on me then. That's all right. Thank you, though. Good girl. Yeah, you can get up now. Nowadays, everyone talks about protein shakes and vitamin boosters and all sorts of superfoods. In Lammy's life, nothing will be more important than these few meals in this injection. So I know that just looks like blood right now, but once it settles out, we're going to be left with blood cells down the bottom and a bit we one will be at the top. Yes. So we're going to suck that out and it's almost like nature's own vaccination. It'll go in there and make the absolute world of difference to little Lammy. We've got someone else who wants to donate blood. Our donation hours have actually closed. We only take blood between four and five and you're just a little bit late. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously the sheep around here are very kind-hearted and very generous because they're now queuing up 
to donate blood to Lammy. They sense a cause, they sense a lamb in need, and they want to help out. Ah! How many uh, devils do you think we'll have in the traps? I reckon we get six, seven out of eight, I reckon yeah. at least. It's dawn at the Devil Ark in Barrington Tops. I just hope we don't get too many empty pouches. Mm. Tim and the Rangers are about to find out if they've lured any female devils into their traps. Only then can they discover if they have joeys on the way. We good to roll? Yeah, good. I'm pretty confident that we'll find joeys. However, this is real pioneer conservation and there are always gonna be hurdles and sometimes it mightn't work. <laughs> empty. Too empty. Not a good start. Next one. Let's hope it's a girl. Oh, look at that. This is what we were after. She's got one, two, three, and one's actually still inside the pouch. This is magic. Little Tassie Devils, this is the next generation. Dear. That thing is so big and rugged and I don't think it's going to move, so poor Hero's going to need surgery. At SASH, X-rays have revealed that Hero has swallowed a large rock. It's now threatening to perforate his intestines, but so far the lab is showing no signs of distress. They are an inspiration. I don't know if that says big personality or small brain, but I'm going to go with big, big, big personality. Come on, buddy. I cannot believe that you are sick. My goodness. All right, so unfortunately, it looks like he's got a big rock in his intestines. OK, so it's about this big. Now, sometimes if the rocks are small, we can watch them and see if it will pass. And I think it's worth giving him a chance to see if he does pass it by himself. But. My gut feeling tells me that it's too big to fit through and I think that he probably will have to have surgery. Okay. okay. Now if we do nothing and it stays there, it will wear through his intestines and it can perforate his intestines and there's even a chance it's already done that. We just need to be very, very careful and watch him closely. I never really wanted him to have an operation because operations never good like in the long term. So, yeah, well, has to be done. <laughs> yeah, sad. You can see it's separated now. So, the blood cells have gone to the bottom, and this clear stuff up the top is what we need. There's plenty there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. Chris is about to give Lammy her supercharged plasma transfusion. The orphan lamb has been raised by Zoe the Dalmatian, but is vulnerable to infections because she missed out on the antibodies in her mother's milk. So that's how much we need? Yes. You can see it's nice and clear? Yes. And we go straight into Lammy. It's going to make you just like the other lambs. Huh? It's like a life injection. This injection is something pretty special. It's like a wonder drug. What it'll do to Lammy's immune system is give it this immediate boost. She'll feel so much better, but importantly, she'll be able to fend off any nasty viruses or infections that come along. All right, that's all done. You were very good. You were very good. Yeah, so that's extra protection, really. Thank you, Dr. Chris. That's all right. I mean, it, it should serve as some sort of insurance policy. Okay. And she had no insurance sick. policy before. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, you were so good. I think we need some sort of reward for you, don't we? Huh? I don't know I've got. <laughs> that <laughs> might just do it. Do you like bottles? Are you in any way interested in, in bottles? Are they something that you at least sort of Sorry. half <laughs> partial to? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> The thing that's nagging on my mind right now is that I can make Lammy as healthy as possible for the next few months, but ultimately she needs to be a sheep and she can't do that unless the rest of the flock accepts her. This, it's cute, but you know, it can't go on forever. 
We need to teach Liam that she's a sheep, because if she doesn't think she's a sheep, she's never going to hang out with them and never going to have a normal life after that. No. Okay, so I do have a couple of things in mind. And what is that? You're about to find out. Okay. Right, one, two, three. Okay, out you come, Mum. Here we go. At the Devil Ark, okay, there is one trap left, her, and Tim and the team are hoping it will be hiding more babies. Okay, out you come. Can you look after her, Ed? <laughs> Have a look at this. There's four little joeys in there. I don't know how many boys or girls, but we'll find out. And they're big enough that they're off, Mum. I'm going to grab them out. Look at this. Ball of devil joeys. Look at that. Magic. Those little sounds are so cute. The little whimpers. Here we got little girl. There's yeah, a little, little pouch. Girl. Little pouch just down there. Ow. Ow. They're a handful. Another little girl. Little girl? Look at that. We got four sisters. I gotta tell you about this one's a bit lethargic, a bit small. Yeah. Can you know, I take that there? And I'm feeling a fair bit of rib there, you know, and a bit gaunt. It's only subtle, but I'm definitely concerned. And if one of these wasn't to get milk, they would go downhill really fast. So the question now is, is do we intervene? You might be having surgery today. I, I don't... Next morning at Sash, Hero is still just as happy and blissfully unaware how close he is to going under the knife. Poor oh, Hero. We just have to take an x-ray of Hero today as a precaution because we're all prepped and ready to take him into surgery. We want to make sure that the rock is where it was last night. Okay, Hero. Hero, just stay here. The one-year-old Labrador has a dangerous habit of eating rocks. This time, he's got himself into a lot of trouble. Look, the rock is about four centimetres big and it was stuck in his small intestines. I really don't think that that rock has moved at all. All right, so this is Hero's last chance to avoid surgery. Hear that, Hero? This is it. Oh, wow. That is amazing. This rock or bone or whatever it is has gone all the way from his small intestines down into his large intestines, into his colon, and it's sitting now in his rectum. It's like that far of coming out on its own. Wow. If you look at last night's picture, you can see just how far it's traveled. I mean, it's gone his whole intestinal tract in less than 12 hours. I'm just blown away. Hero has dodged one bullet, but getting out that rock is going to be no walk in the park. I don't think that this is going to be a pleasant thing for him to be pooping out. It looks pretty rugged and rough on the edges, and um, it's four centimetres big, so um, good luck to Hero. <laughs> So one of the joys of my job involves putting a little bit of lubrication up a dog's bottom to try and get them to pass a rugged rock. Now, he might lose his dignity while it's all happening, but unfortunately, that's what happens when you eat rocks. I'm so sorry. I promise I will be as gentle as I can. I'm just going to see what I can feel. Oh, there it is. It is this far from coming out. It is, like, poking out. Sorry, my sweetheart. Definitely violating him here. <laughs> If one of these wasn't to get milk, they would go downhill really fast. So the question now is, is do we intervene? At D 
Dental Arc, Tim is checking on the success of their breeding program. He's discovered a joey who's smaller than the rest. I'm feeling a fair bit of rib there, you know, and a bit gone. <laughs> An examination of the mother reveals a possible reason. It's hard to know which joey come from which teeth. They all do have an individual teeth. But there is an obvious size difference on that bottom teeth there. OK, let's get Mum back. We'll just find a good box down here, hey? Yeah, beauty. There you go, darling. <laughs> Tim needs to decide if removing the smaller joey and hand-rearing it is the best thing for Mum and the baby. I say do it and the Mum will recover quicker. She'll be back here in 12 months anyway. Yeah. There is a consequence of hand rearing her, and that is that I have to take two. She needs a sibling, she needs warmth, comfort, and they teach each other how to be devils for the big world that they're going to enter when they're adults. Well, who's going to come with her? Well, we let them choose. This doesn't have any effect on mum. She's still got two joeys, and they're a big demand themselves. Her teats will become inactive if, if one of them's not already partially inactive, uh, and simply she'll concentrate on the two. I need to get them in something warm. I've got a bean here you can use. Yeah, perfect, mate. That'll do. There we go, and that'll be their new home, their little pouch. We'll just pop them inside the shirt. I think we'd better get the other two back with mum. There's your mum. Go on, there she is. There's two. You go back with mum as well. Go on. There she is. You got her. See you guys. I feel like I've got my own babies. With the rest of the family reunited, Tim will now take the other two devils home for 24-7 attention. I'm going to take them home and introduce them to my little boy Billy, uh, my wife Liz, and then my little, little boy Maddie. They're comfy and they're cradled by that seatbelt. They're safe. Sorry, Hero. Feels rough. Oh, oh boy. OK, I'll go slow. Hero has avoided emergency surgery after swallowing a large rock. But he's now facing an uncomfortable procedure. OK, Hero, I know. I know. Oh, OK, there's something. Oh, what that is? It feels like bone. There's more in there, so I'm going in again. OK, so this is the big piece. Just slowly, slowly. Sorry, Hero. Nearly there. I know. Don't I know. Watch. It's really big, this thing. Come on, Hero. Just Give if you push. push, it would help. Just like giving birth. Yeah. I'm trying to grip this thing and I'm really trying hard not to hurt him, so I don't think it's as easy as I originally had thought. OK, here we go. Here we go. That's all right, Hero. There you go. Good oh my boy. god. That's Good a rock. Boy. What is that? Good boy. I cannot believe that this rock was swallowed whole, passed through his esophagus, down his stomach, into his intestines, and out the other end without causing any damage. That is a really, really lucky outcome. Okay, hero. You see this? This is a rock. This belongs in the garden, not in your mouth or in your stomach or in your butt. OK? Yes, thank you. You've done a very good job, my man. A very good job. Go on, guys. Go on. In the Barossa Valley, Chris has come up with an unusual plan to help five-week-old Lammy. <laughs> The orphan has been raised by a Dalmatian and is suffering an identity crisis. Come on. Come on. 
Lammy's spending so much time around Zoe, sleeping next to her and being licked by her, that she smells more like a dog than she does a sheep. If we were to put her out with the flock of sheep right now, they'd smell her straight away and go, no, she's an imposter, and they could hurt her. There we go. See? That's easy, isn't it? So the most important thing right now is we take away that doggy smell and replace it with something they're going to find a little bit more acceptable. Hey, little one. I think we need you. you OK with that? OK. So the plan is we're going to put a little cloth inside the nappy. Put the nappy on with the tail poking through, of course. And it's going to soak up any little spills that you will probably have. The thing about lamb wee is that it's the essence of sheep. So when I take that cloth and put it on Lammy, then Lammy's going to smell more like a sheep than like Zoe. So now the nappy's in place, the plan is we just leave our lamb to wander around, <laughs> do what lambs do, and then we have the special ingredient in making Lammy more of a sheep. OK, ready? Here you go. You don't look silly. I'm pretty sure that when Julie walks into the paddock and sees one of her lambs looking like a toddler, she might be surprised. Let's go. Come on, here. Good boy, come here. Hero, the rock-eating lab, is ready to go home with his relieved owners, Michael and Sally. Come on, come on, come on. I have a little present for you guys. Oh my, oh my gosh. Look at that, huh? Dear. Dear. That is what came out oh, of him. You're yes. Not using it again. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Indeed you are. So what are we gonna do about these rocks at home? Oh, we've got the landscaper coming in this weekend, yeah. so Clean they're going everything. to like getting rid of them? Yes. Yeah, and they're paving the whole garden. Ah oh. leaving a little pit of like grass for him. Fantastic. Do anything. Right. Hero, we won't tell any of your friends what happened to you here. It can be our little secret, okay? Oh. Yeah. You just <laughs> wag your tail in my face. <laughs> yep, yep, I know that area very well, so we'll just keep that butt away from me. <laughs> Thank you. Pity for them they'll have to read do their whole backyard, it's going to cost a fortune, and that's all because Hero has a taste for rocks. Hello? Who is it? Daddy. Who is it? Daddy. Hello, guys. Ah. Hello. 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 Hey, come here. You. <laughs> hey, I got a surprise for you. Hmm? Tim has arrived home with the two babies from Devil Ark. Two-year-old Billy is never sure what Dad will bring in the door. Do you want to sit down in the lounge? Sit down for a minute and I'll show you. Mummy wants to have Ready? a look too. Look. Babies! They're little Tasmanian devils. Can you say devil? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, put your arms out. Oh, geez, you're good. We've got another two mouths to feed. Yeah, we sure do. Around the clock. If you're getting out the night feeds with them, you can get out and feed Maddie no then. No way. <laughs> I was playing on the opposite. <laughs> do you know what they drink? The devils will okay, stay with go. Tim for six months, initially requiring four feeds a day. Look how good she's doing. She needs a good feed. That's her whiskers. <laughs> Do you think she's finished? I think she just did really, really well. The last couple of days has been great. We have 10 joeys from three females. That's, that's just extraordinary and it, it means that it's working. It means that what we're doing is right and it means the devil has a chance. You're my little devil. I'm a big devil. Big devil? <laughs> Billy's devil. <laughs> Billy's devil. A surprise for you. Come with me. These are your sheep, right? I recognise them, yes. There's now a difference with one of your sheep. It's time for Chris to reveal the second part of his lamby strategy. He's hoping he's found a way for the orphan lamb to fit in with her flock. She's been spending too much time with Zoe, 
her surrogate Dalmatian mother. Oh, you're kidding me. It's got a nappy on. Yeah, it's got a nappy on it. What were you thinking? I'm looking at this lamb. It's got to be some sort of joke. The wee's been collected into a little towel. That towel then has essence to sheep, eau de sheep, all over it. The thing about sheep is they go as much on smell as they do on looks. And even though Lammy is a lamb, she's going to smell like a dog, and that has to change. So now we'll get the nappy off and take that cloth and give Lammy a little bit of... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Perfume. Hmm. Special perfume. OK. All right. I'm open to any unusual idea that Chris has got, even if it means Lammy wearing an unusual perfume. Yeah. There we go. Cheers. Yeah. All right, so take the nappy off. So this now becomes no. Lammy's new perfume. <laughs> you test it. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right with mine. There you go, number one. Thank you, by the way. By dabbing on that smell of lamb urine, she's instantly going to start smelling like a sheep. With this lamb urine, what we do is just dab it on her shoulders, on her back there, and I hate to say it, on her face as well, on her ears. So now we've got Lammy smelling more like a sheep. Her training isn't over. She needs the final step, which is her learning to essentially be a sheep and be accepted by the rest of the flock. <coughs> They've been looking at her, hanging around Zoe and wondering what's going on there. So the way we introduce her to the flock is very gently, because if we rush it, they could actually either try to charge her. Or hurt her. Or hurt her. Yes. Because they see her as being as much a dog as they do a sheep. <coughs> Sorry, Lammy. We're not going to get Lammy accepted into this flock today. It's going to be something that's going to take a number of weeks. But if Julie can just put Lammy into that little pen for an hour every day, they'll get to know each other, become more familiar. So when Lammy eventually goes out to the paddock with them, there'll be no problem at all. Lammy's going to act like she wants to get out there and be a sheep tomorrow, mm. you know, but you have to pull it back mm. and just do it very gently because if you don't, then if you rush it, so many things could go wrong. I think we'll call them baby steps. <laughs> Lammy steps. This is good though. Right. The great thing about these solutions is that whilst it's allowing Lammy to go back with a flock of sheep, it's not ending the relationship with Zoe. Their lives will be separate, but not too far apart. I think it's very special that Dr Chris, the Bondi vet's come to visit me in the Brossa Valley and I'm really happy that he's made the effort and I think it, we've all learnt a lot from it. You can't go home without a glass of red. Thank you for coming. So you never ask. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.